All right, everybody, welcome to Digital Asset News. My name is Rob, and today what I want to talk about was the different alternatives that are out there for us as far as crypto projects. There's one that's uh, caught a lot of people's attention, especially my own. It's Cosmos. And I don't have a, a very wide depth of, of knowledge of, of the ecosystem and things that are going on, so I invited a couple of people that do. Uh, crypto Sita, one of my rights, and also a friend of the show, Jerry Hall. Gentlemen, thanks for coming by the show. Cheers. Thanks for having us. Yes, thanks. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we're just going to go over this very, very basic. Now, Jerry, you've been on the show many a time. Everybody loves Jerry. He's got a great Patreon. Of course, you guys can uh, can check that out. But the question that, of course, we have to ask is, uh, of course, Jerry, we know you, but who is Cryptocito and how did he get into uh, the crypto world? Next one is why Cosmos? Uh, what is Cosmos and what gives it the absolute edge? Uh, because there's so many different things that are out there between layer zeros and layer ones. And then the one that brought me to the attention was there's a specific video, and I linked the description so you guys can check it out. It's the Cosmos Adam predictions for 2023. And he talks about people who are staking on Cosmos will also get additional tokens that are built on top of Cosmos itself. So I thought I'd find that fascinating if you could elaborate on that. And then lastly, uh, how difficult is Cosmos to use and what is the user interface like? And that'll be for both of you to go over. So the first things first, Cito. Who are you? Yeah. How uh, did you get into crypto? Uh, I mean, I got into it uh, sometime like early 2017. Bitcoin just crossed a thousand dollars after a couple of years again, and I was studying that time. I studied economics and uh, Chinese actually, Mandarin. Um, mm -hmm. so at that time, I was just got hooked of the idea that you know um, what Bitcoin was, but it forced me to learn what money is. So. Uh, by, by studying Bitcoin, I really understood how central banks work for the first time. Like I went to school before, of course, but I never learned how money works, how central banks work. Yeah. So that got me really hooked. And um, yeah, then in my exchange here in China, I really got to meet a lot of, uh, you know, the crypto developers, builders, um, became part of the community there, started doing events there, uh, more community oriented, just try to absorb as much as I could. And then, uh, you know, obviously 2017 bull run, um, made a lot of money, lost everything in 2018, like yes. probably most of us. Um, and then uh, sometime like when COVID started uh, early 2020, I just thought, you know, I could just start a YouTube channel, share some of the experiences I made in that journey to help people avoid uh, making those mistakes. Um, and then sometime in uh, early 2021, just before IBC went live, I discovered Cosmos. Um, maybe we can talk about why Cosmos and what it is uh, later on. Yeah. But it got me really hooked this idea, you know, of multi-chain or interchain, which is actually what Cosmos pioneered. Also, this idea that Bitcoin is not going to be the only one that kills and you know dominates everything. Um, there's going to be variations, different niches, different uh, use cases. Right. So, yeah. And since then, um, pretty much focus on Cosmos. Even though I'm still very open to other ecosystems as well. But yeah, that's the... That makes sense. That sounds like a, a pretty good story, just like like uh, me and Jerry had. 2017, got into it, felt like, uh, of course, geniuses, wrote it all the way up, wrote it all the way down. 99, 95% oh. or plus. Remember those days, Jerry? Uh-huh. Oh, you bet. <laughs> that's it. So the, so the next question will be like this. Why Cosmos? What is Cosmos and what gives the edge? And I'm going to start with, with Jerry here because Jerry is the one that introduced me to it. And I had heard rumblings of how good Cosmos was and what was going on. But I wanted just to get, so Jerry, because what brought you to Cosmos and enough to bring me into it? And then we'll, we'll take a, a listen to Crypto Cito as to why he, he got in there. Well, the, what brought me to Cosmos in the beginning was the age old investor adage. If you're going to own something, have it pay you to own it, okay. right? Uh, earn interest on it, get a dividend on it, have it pay you rent if it's a piece of land, what have you. Right. Um, and I was thumbing through yield coins. You know, I was used to getting my 4% with Cardano and that was wonderful. You know, yield had just come to crypto uh, with the advent of proof of stake protocols. And I was looking on, believe it or not, of all places, Kraken. And I saw this token called Kava for 20%. And I went, I'm getting 5% for my Cardano. This thing will pay me 20. And that was my entry into the Cosmos verse. 
because at this time, IBC had already been happening, the inner blockchain communication protocol. And that led me down the rabbit hole of looking into this, what they call the map of zones, where you can see all the projects that are in the Cosmoverse. And I started seeing projects that had real world applications, but that were on the blockchain. And the mm -hmm. first thing I thought of was, how Uber disrupted taxis, how Airbnb disrupted hotels. I'm seeing VPN companies in the Cosmoverse called Sentinel. I'm seeing cloud computing blockchain companies like Akash. Um, most recently, we've got Jackal, which is a cloud storage, you know, megabytes, gigabytes, terabytes storage on uh, blockchain companies. These are real world services that being done on the blockchain presents a cheaper, better, harder, faster product to the end user, I'm thinking there's a pretty good chance that some of this stuff could catch on. So as an investor, as an early investor, to buy some of these tokens and then stake them, I'm dollar cost averaging these coins for the rest mm -hmm. of time with no further dollar investment. That is smart investing if something were to take off, right? The other stuff for me, White Cosmos, the NFTs, DeFi, and really innovative community stuff. Like, for instance, there's a company, a little validation company. All they do is validators for these proof of stake companies, uh, proof of stake blockchains. I'm sorry. They yeah. created a piece of software called Restake that will automatically auto compound my stake and rewards for me. I don't have to spend any money on fees doing it yeah. i don't have to do anything i sign a one-year smart contract and walk away and let that auto compound and we all know the value of compounding interest right what did yeah. what did einstein say eighth wonder of the world <laughs> that's it so so it was a combination of number go up and also a lot of utility a lot of things that are being built in the background oh, right goodness. Well, I mean, does does VPN have anything to do with what we generally speculate in crypto? No. Cloud computing? No. Cloud storage? No. Mm -hmm. However, there are real businesses building real products in those verticals in the blockchain space. And you can pick up ownership interest, i.e. coins, at pennies, literally pennies. Yeah. Who knows what they'll be in the, in the future, right? Yeah. So this will so the auto compounding, you can literally turn fifty dollar one time investment into hundreds of thousands of dollars five years from now if you follow any kind of logical math if it gets adoption. Well, Jerry, I hope you're right. So that would lead me to to Cito. So so my man, we heard Jerry's reasoning, numbers go up, real utility, things are going on. How do you see it? What brought you into Cosmos and what gives it the edge in your opinion? Because your whole channel is built around that premise. Yeah, first of all, I love Jerry's uh, passion uh, on Cosmos and I would echo a lot of what he said uh, in regards to the ecosystem. I think Cosmos actually is a mix of like a lot of innovative infrastructure, right? You have Tendermint, mm -hmm. which is one of the first, maybe the first actual proof of stake consensus algorithms in production uh, Jay Kwon, the inventor, has been working on this 2014, right, right, way ahead of its time. You have IBC, right, this uh, interoperability standard or TCP IP equivalent. Um, so you have all these innovative um, features uh, for the for the infrastructure in Cosmos. But at the same time, like Jerry said, you have a lot of like real world use cases, right? I would add also region network to that. Um, yeah. They're building a carbon uh, credit marketplace really mm -hmm. cool stuff and that's also like already years in the works right um so you have a lot of cool stuff but what got me ex like interested in the first place was from more from uh, an ideological perspective because mm -hmm. when i started my channel <clears throat> you know there was a time when we were just you know at the bottom everything was super bearish uh, people were pretty much bitcoin maxis left and right mm -hmm. um, i'm sure you remember these times uh, you oh, know yeah early 2020 everything else was a scam but i always thought that um bitcoin is not going to you know dominate everything so i was always interested in other ecosystems but sure there was a lot of disappointment right for example iota um, right. eos even cardano right like they have been in the works for so many years 
Um, Cardano is still probably doing well, but like if you take if you look at the EOS and um, some of the others that are not really operating anymore, Nem, um, Neo, yeah. right? Nem, ETH, the big ETH killers from 2017, 18. Right. I understand why people would say, okay, I'm only looking into Bitcoin right now. Everything else is a scam. But it's an evolution. That's how I see crypto. And I think <clears throat> if you look into the people, the amount of smart people um, uh, that are building in Cosmos and also the mutual respect between Cosmos developers and Ethereum developers or even parity developers, um, that's really some a, a solid foundation on, on which Cosmos is built on. And I felt that personally, right? Like when I started to cover Cosmos, I didn't have many followers. But core developers still took the time to get on calls with me, explain to me what IBC was. Um, and uh, the first one was actually Jack Zampolin, who is a core Cosmos developer, super helpful in, you know, community questions, very, very um, nice guy. And um, he educated me first on Cosmos. And from there, I just continued doing my homework. And I also had this idea to just say, hey, I don't want to, spread myself too thin and cover everything at once. I rather want to be an expert in one ecosystem um, and go down that rabbit hole really deep. And then uh, obviously with, you know, IBC adoption, um, even today, like there's so many projects I don't even know because like this ecosystem is growing so fast, you know, and um, within Cosmos. So yeah, it's uh, it's been a good journey, but I would say ideological perspective is really important to me this multi-chain future. We're not the ETH killer. We're probably helping to also add value to ETH um, and also the, the diversity of the ecosystem, right? Um, and right. of course, also the, the app chain philosophy, which Cosmos actually pioneered and then connected through IBC. Um, that really makes a lot of sense to me from an architectural standpoint. So, yeah. Yeah, I can see it. Now we're just taking a look here at uh, Cosmos.network, the ecosystem itself and the apps that are being built on. I saw that... Uh, Binance chain looks like they used a couple of different uh, fundamentals uh, from Cosmos to build their chain. I know, I think it's crypto.com, I think was built, yeah. Lacro was built on Cosmos. And I believe that, uh, and may, make fun of you or, or not if you watch the video, but uh, you know, we had uh, Anchor Protocol and Luna, uh, even though as much as transactions as they had, I mean, barring everything that happened, wasn't, weren't they also built in, in, within Cosmos in the ecosystem? Yeah. Or no? So, Terra was the flagship Cosmos project yeah. um, in terms of market cap. They were by far the biggest one. And the fact that they actually collapsed and went to zero overnight, but it didn't affect Atom, it didn't affect Osmo in terms of operations, actually proved the whole app chain uh, thesis, uh, at least. Um, but yeah, you're right. Terra was a big one. Both BNB and Polygon as well actually built on uh, their own versions of Tendermint. So they forked mm -hmm. Tendermint, you know, their chains are running on that. Um, Thor chain as well, even though they don't have IBC, it's also built on the Cosmos SDK. So you have a lot of undercover Cosmos projects. Right. Um, but that's probably also, it has been a, big, a bit of a, a, a criticism over the, over the past years that Cosmos doesn't have aggressive marketing. But I think now you can see that you, we have a lot of organic marketing and I think that's more sustainable. Um, but yeah, I think Cosmos in general could do a better job as an ecosystem and we as a community to, you know, do more stuff like this right now. And I'm glad you reached out to us and say, hey, let's talk about Cosmos um, because the word really needs to get out there um, to, to onboard new users and developers. Um, but yeah, I think people are, when they start doing their research, they're actually surprised how much is actually built on Cosmos. Yeah, it was, I mean, honestly, it was surprising to me. And I always, you know, we always hear the the same tone, which is everything's built on Ethereum. So just, you know, getting that layer one. But if we take a look at Cosmos, there's a lot of being, a lot of things being built on there. And I didn't know anything about this until Jerry reached out to me and go, hey, you need to watch this video. And there's one from you. But, and, and then I watched a couple. And one that was, that struck me as quite interesting is this, this latest video you did, your Cosmos predictions for 2023, which Everybody loves prediction video, that's for sure. But on um, one of these things that you said, on top of many things, was you said because of all the different all the different chains that are being built on Cosmos, when we stake in Cosmos, we actually can earn these other chains, these other projects, these other tokens. So talk to us about that and what and just elaborate a little bit about uh, what's going on there. 
Yeah, so I think in general it's important to understand how what Cosmos actually is, right? And okay. Cosmos is not Cosmos as an ecosystem is not a layer zero. It's often labeled as that, but Cosmos is actually just a network of sovereign layer ones, right? So you have this app chain philosophy, which I said earlier, which basically means that you say, hey, I have this cool idea. Jerry mentioned a couple of them, right? Like I've, I want to do computing. I want to do storage. I want to do a VPN. I want to build a DEX. Instead of having that as a smart contract on a layer one, like Ethereum, Solana, you have it, you, you give it basically its own chain, right? So now it's not a smart contract. It's basically its own sovereign blockchain with its own validator set. And how do you scale and make it compatible mm -hmm. to other ecosystem or to other chains within that ecosystem? That's where IBC comes in. So that's the whole philosophy. And the, the goal behind that is to have more customizability, scalability, um, and, and sovereignty, right? Um, and you also decongest the main layer, right? And you also right. decrease the dependencies on the main layer, right? We've seen, for example, on Solana, whenever Solana went down, everything on Solana went down. Everything, so, yeah. Um, that's the thing. And, you know, on Ethereum, obviously, if, if something goes big, like CryptoKitties in 2017, it just congests <laughs> the entire chain, right? Right. So, so yeah, that, that's the thing. And then, um, yeah, I think for this year right now, I think Cosmos is in a very uh, good spot to actually showcase that, the app chain philosophy. And um, the Cosmos Hub, which is oftentimes um, misperceived as Cosmos Hub and Atom is Cosmos. The Cosmos Hub and Atom are actually just a competitive layer one within Cosmos, right? Hmm. Atom is not a layer zero. Atom is just an L1 competing with any other uh, chain in Cosmos. Um, but it's the oldest chain, the first one, the first, you know, the chain that brought IBC to life. Um, but it still needs to find its its killer application um, to be also competitive, not just within Cosmos, but also with the Ethereum's, with the Solanas, with the Avalanches out there, right? So what's coming now is what I believe is that killer application, which is a um, shared security model um, that is um, tailored to Cosmos, and it's called Interchain Security. I think they even renamed it now to a Replicated Security, but it doesn't matter, it's just details. What it does, it allows you to bootstrap your own chain without having to bootstrap your own validator set which can be ah, costly, time-consuming, right. a big effort, right? Um, we see projects like DYDX that already have a lot of traction that decided to now build their own Cosmos chain. They will do that. But smaller projects um, that might not want to build their own chain for that, they can just launch on the Cosmos Hub. And what it will do is Cosmos Hub validators will also validate blocks on that chain, on that so-called consumer zone. There's actually a model that's quite similar to how parachains work on Polkadot or Kusama. Right. right, right, right. So that is coming to the Cosmos Hub. And what it will mean for stakers and validators is that all these chains that will pack to the Cosmos Hub and rent security from it, they obviously have to like somehow pay for it, right? Um, in Kusama, you have uh, this, this auction model. In Cosmos, it's going to be um, through on-chain governance. Um, and then part of the token um, inflation or emission will go to Atom stakers, right? So you stake Atom, you get Neutron, which is one of the confirmed uh, consumer chains that will come to the Cosmos Hub, um, which is built by the team that also built Lido, for example, right? Like there, there are even like big names that are coming to, to use uh, shared security. Um, you have uh, liquid staking protocols like Stride. Mm -hmm. You have um, USDC. Native issuance, so Circle is actually going to build a consumer chain um, packed to the Cosmos Hub. So imagine you just stake Atom and you get all these coins um, yeah. for staking Atom, right? Um, so yeah, I mean that was probably a bit uh, of a long version, but um, yeah, that's how it will work. But like a necessary yeah. version, a real necessary version, and the reason being, for a long, long time, the investment community, who maybe wasn't necessarily interested in the tech as much, were like what are paths to profitability for this coin adam right well this interchange security provides the path to profitability i mean it's really a game changer from a tokenomics perspective from a investor standpoint you know the, the guy who's only interested in roi return 
on my investment. Yeah. And it's good tech. Yeah, gotcha. And free the seal, you know. Buy exactly. An and save a seal. <laughs> save a seal. Perfect. So this will lead me to, to my last one. And I'm gonna start. And Jerry, since you've you've uh, oh. you're the one that, that talked to me about this, which was the user interface. So how difficult is Adam or Cosmos to use? Well, we'll, we'll, just, we'll just start with Adam, you know, as, at, yeah. at, as the hub itself. How difficult is it to use? What, what's the user interface like? And then what are you personally doing with it? Okay. Um, everything works real well with comparison. So most people who've been in crypto understand MetaMask, the browser extension wallet you can mm -hmm. plug into Brave or Chrome or, or whatever. Um, and when you use that, you're interacting with dApps or applications in Ethereum or other blockchains that you've connected to your MetaMask wallet. Right. Well, if you remember when DeFi came out, I dabbled in that. And man, it was expensive. Mm -hmm. It was so expensive mm -hmm. to deal with sushi swap and liquidity pools and trying to do this and do that and the other thing for a little guy like me only pushing, you know, 10, 20, 30 dollars, it was cost prohibitive, I couldn't do it. I find the Atom Network and the Kepler wallet, more so than any other wallet in the world, the Kepler wallet, K-E-L-P-R, created this ease of use. It's like having my, it's like having a MetaMask wallet with all the chains, I can connect all the chains easily, effortlessly. With IBC, I can move assets around on different blockchains for fractions of a penny and speed and finality of settlement is as high as anything I've used ever. And I used to be a big XRP guy. Yeah. So I, you know, I know a little bit about fast blockchains. This, this ecosystem is fast, simple, and very efficient when it comes to fees and costs of use. No, sounds good. And then that would be like my last one. So Cryptocito for you, and you can talk about Adam or the Cos or Cosmos itself, Tendermint. I'm not a developer. I don't think any of us are, but I mean, just to talk about like the ease of use and how easy it would be just to use, you can start with Adam or we, or we can talk about Cosmos as well. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, also what, what Jerry said uh, is uh, true. I mean, that also got me really hooked is the simplicity and the focus on having a smooth UX. Um, because a lot of these applications in crypto are very, you can tell like developers have, have you know, made the, the front end and like they just shipped what they think works. And they're right. excited about the tech and maybe that's also good. But to onboard really a lot of users, you know, UX for, for basic retail, non-technical people like I am um, and you are, um, right. it needs to be intuitive. So I think, you know, if you look at osmosis.zone, the best decks in crypto, in my opinion, yeah. it's just so easy and so seamless, right? I started to, uh, and I've used other wallets and other DEXs in the past, but uh, as Jerry said, you know, you can make IBC transfers and it's not even like labeled as, oh, you're now doing this and there's cross chain and you have to click here. It's like, yes, that's, that's awful. Or withdraw, simple, right? Like just click here, bam, two clicks and you're done. So I think that's a big thing um, from a developer perspective. Um, and I talk to a lot of them on my channel. They just, I get the same, you know, and, and I get actually more and more excitement also outside of Cosmos. You know, we also see DYDX moving now. There's a project from uh, Polkadot called Syntropy that is now moving away from Substrate onto Cosmos. Um, they seem to just feel that it's more, they have more flexibility, more tools, it's more customizable um, from a developer perspective. And I think once Interchain Security goes live on the Cosmos Hub, it will just add another layer of um, customizability and um, you know uh, another toolbox where developers can just have even more options um, to spin up their own chains or even to migrate and move back and forth, right? We also see um, projects sometimes they launch on one network and then they just move to another one or they move to an L2 or they spin up their own chain. This stuff is very fluid. And I think Cosmos provides a lot of flexibility here, which is why I think, I made this prediction also in the video, by the end of this year, um, more than 200 IBC connected chains. Right now we're at 53, according to mapofzones.com. Um, so that's a 4X roughly. Um, but I think 
you know, I mean, I don't know. That might be even conservative. So who knows? But I think uh, there's a lot in the works. So I'm excited. Yeah, I can tell you. So, yeah, I mean, like a 4X to, to go from there for, you know, growth. I mean, that, that would bring it back right back to its uh, to Adam's all time high. I think it's around ten dollars now. I think forty dollars was uh, at the very end. So that so that'll do it. So, guys, so don't forget Crypto City was channel. His channel is a link in the description. You can follow him on YouTube, follow, uh, watch all those videos. Also uh, on Twitter as well. Link in the description. Jerry, who has been uh, lagging quite uh, quite a bit, uh, but has some fantastic guests. Uh, Tom Bilyeu, Raul Powell, Greg Foss. Who else? You had? you had Peter McCormick and I don't know if you had Michael Saylor on at one point. No, no Saylor, no Saylor. But Jeff Booth from the from the Jeff price Booth. of tomorrow and and Raul Powell and and of course you yeah right? well, well, digital asset news that was probably your biggest guest and then uh, also and don't forget about Jerry's patreon and also follow him on Twitter so gentlemen thanks again for stopping by I appreciate it again links in the description that's it thank you so much like and subscribe yes. see you on the next one